Hello and welcome to this special edition of Today's Tidings. I'm your host, Joyce Tumia. Our topic today is Fred Lester, after whom Lester Grade School is named. And my guests are Lois Sturba, who is the treasurer for the Downers Grove Historical Society, and Karen Novak, who is the principal of Lester School. And I would like them to each start by sharing some background information on themselves. Who'd like to go first? Well, I'll go first. Okay. I'm Lois Sturba, and I've lived in the village for about 20 years. And presently, I'm the treasurer of the Downers Grove Historical Society. And we try to promote and preserve history of Downers Grove. So we're very happy to participate today. And you're a wonderful person to have here for that reason and others. Karen? Um, I'm Karen Novak, principal over at Lester School. And um, I have been an administrator for 17 years and a principal over at Lester for nine of those years. Nine so of those years. I am kind of like have adopted, while I am not a Downers Grove resident, I have like adopted this community and um, we have a wonderful, you know, um, Lester family and community that, you know, helps us and is, you know, supportive of our school and the district and the community. If so. you've been there for nine years, how many times have you been asked to talk about how the school was named? And then the person it was named after. Actually, um, every so often we have a large display that's in our lobby right when you come in the front door of our school. And it talks all about, you know, Frederick Lester, um, typically around the holidays, you know, in terms of Veterans Day and Memorial Day. The children are a little bit, you know, curious about, you know, um, and more of that information will come up uh, at that time. Uh, back last year at the end of the school year, um, one of the longtime Lions, you know, founders, Dr. Lloyd, Lloyd Meisner. Meisner, yes, mm -hmm. he had come to the school and he had asked if um, we would be interested, you know, for this year in doing a presentation on Fred Lester. And um, as, you know, Dr. Meisner and Fred were um, classmates together, you know, and both served in World War II. So we thought it was, you know, a fabulous idea and, you know, um, went to the Downers Grove Museum and, you know, uh, did some, you know, Googling and things like that and found out a lot more information about Fred that we had not previously known and put it all together and then, you know, gave that presentation um, on Veterans Day in November. And I was happy to be there yes. and she did an excellent mm -hmm. job. In fact, mm -hmm. I think she ought to be made an honorary member oh. of the Historical Society I, because well, she's been we doing her part and more <laughs> to promote yes. Lester School and Fred Lester. Mm -hmm. So, well, let's talk a little bit about mm -hmm. the stats of the school itself. When it was built, approximately how many students, well, you might note the number, how many students go there, just a little information on the school itself after whom after which it he the school that is named for Fred Lester yes um, it was um, dedicated on actually on Veterans Day um, November 11th in 1956 um, there was a contest that was held at Herrick and um, I will reference my notes in terms of that but a young lady by the name of Mary Gibson won the contest that was put out by the Board of Education and um, her she suggested that we name the school after Fred Lester and um, we obviously the board liked that idea they did add the name Memorial to that mm -hmm. so it became Frederick Faulkner Lester Memorial School in honor of all the servicemen who served, you know, during World War II, um, besides Fred. That was a nice addition. Yeah, yes, and um, the principal of the school at that time was um, Mrs. Alma Campbell, and it was a, a kindergarten through sixth grade building when it opened, and it had uh, 251 students, you know, when the doors opened. Wow. Yes. And how does um, that compare with today? Uh -huh. Right, uh, today we have um, 504 students at Leicester currently, mm. and we have a few more students over at Bel Air due to a little bit of an overcrowding situation. Wow. However, um, graciously, the Board of Education, after a long, um, you know, researching and things has just recently um, approved an addition to go on to Lester School. So we will be getting, you know, another addition to house, you know, our students. So we will all be together, you know, once again back at Lester. Which is very important for the children. 
And we are really going to talk a lot about Fred Lester, but before mm -hmm. we leave the information on the school itself, for it to have nearly twice as many students mm -hmm. now as it had when it was built back in the 1950s, I hope there have been a few additions over the years. Yes, there have. Good, good. <laughs> Several. Good okay, good. So this is just the latest because the yes. school population keeps growing. Okay. Well, that's a lot more people to honor Fred Lester. Yes. That's wonderful. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get to Fred then. Fred was born in Downers Grove mm -hmm. in the 1920s. Um, April 29th and 1926 was his birthday. Mm -hmm. right. And went to, Lois, you were going to explain well, something about the grade schools that um, he went I to? I would say that there were only uh, four grade schools at that time. We had mm -hmm. uh, Lincoln and Washington, and then we had uh, Whittier and uh, Longfellow. He, so, uh, so he was probably at, um, in attendance at Washington for most of his time, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, because that was the that was north of the train track, they didn't like children crossing over because mm -hmm. the family lived forty four oh seven on Fair, Fairview, Fairview, and they didn't like the children crossing the train track even in those days mm -hmm. if they could help it. Yes. So. Yeah. Fred's home is still standing today, mm -hmm. and um, we have some artifacts that you know possibly will be shown mm -hmm. at the you know during the at the end mm -hmm. with the credits. And um, one his home is actually on one of those artifacts, so um, mm -hmm. viewers can take a look at that. Mm -hmm. You know, we do have a photo here that um, shows Fred uh, at Washington School in 1940, oh. and he is located. Right here, up at the top, in the top row, mm -hmm. just one in, it's and very these nice are picture. some of his classmates. Mm -hmm. You know that he went to school with there. So um, anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they all look so nice. Mm -hmm. All the girls in their dresses and <laughs> nice socks and shoes and all of that stuff. Yeah, black and white photos. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we do know that he went to North High, yes. and in fact. Mm -hmm. He was friends with Floyd Meisner's younger mm -hmm. brother. Floyd knew him as well. They played football together, but I guess he was more friends with the younger brother because they were of an age. So, yes, other he, than football, he was at um, Downers Grove, what is now Downers Grove North at the time, just called Downers Grove High School. Right. And um, Fred uh, tried to enlist when he was 16. You know, it came from a very, um, you know, country and patriotic family. Mm -hmm. And but unfortunately he was too young, so he waited another year and then went back. And with his parents' permission, he, you know, when he would have been a senior in high school, um, they gave him permission to enlist, you know, um, in the army. So he did not uh, graduate, but served, you know, when he was 17 years old. And as a matter of fact, you mentioned his coming from a patriotic family. Mm -hmm. His father, after whom he is named, Fred Sr., mm -hmm. fought in World War II and I believe One. earned a Purple Heart. World yes. War I. Yes, he fought in World War I. World his War I, I'm yes. sorry. Mm -hmm. I meant World War I. Yes, and, World War I. We're uh, talking about Fred in World War II. There were four uh, Lester boys and mm -hmm. three of the boys, including Fred, were in the service. Mm -hmm. So he had those two older brothers and the, old, and the youngest one, uh, the father mentions in, in um, his uh, time with the uh, Bradley Burns Post that his youngest son wanted to enlist too, but he was just not old enough. Mm -hmm. So three of their sons did fight in the war, yeah. so the family was very patriotic. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yes. Okay, so we are up to the point where he was able to enlist, mm -hmm. and he joined a particular branch of the Navy, a yeah. uh, Marine branch, and. Had he, training? Yes, he was trained in Idaho and then was promoted to a seaman second class in January of 1944. And um, he did request to see a lot of action. However, the Navy, you know, decides where you go. So mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, had other plans for him and then decided to um, make him a hospital apprentice. Mm -hmm. So he was sent then to um, the Naval Hospital Field Medical Service School, which was in San Diego, and um, had his combat training there. And then he was, his uh, title was then changed to a hospital apprentice first class, and he finished his training in March of 1944. Um, there. He initially, Fred was, 
you know, a little upset that that was going on, but then he really came to love what he did and even um, wrote home to his parents in uh, some letters that um, the Downers Grove Museum has on hand mm -hmm. and it indicated that he wanted to um, continue training, medical training, even when he came back from the war That's and awesome. wanted to continue and be a doctor. Really? So, you know, he had aspirations, yeah. you know, even as he was serving, you know, serving to continue to serve, mm -hmm. you know, um, moving forward, but, um, you know, that ended up not to be, right. you know, but so. He definitely mm -hmm. was instrumental in helping save a lot of lives because oh, yes. he treated a lot of wounded. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we come mm -hmm. to the big event yes. in which he lost his life, right. Yes, but not, not before saving someone else right. and helping save two other people. Do you mm -hmm. want to recount that? Um, well, he was in Okinawa. He mm -hmm. was in Okinawa mm -hmm. and during a battle, and uh, he noticed that there was a man down in the enemy lines, and he crawled over there to get him. And as he crawled over to pull this man safety, he was shot several times. Mm -hmm. And uh, but times. he kept going, and even though he was mm -hmm. shot a few more times, he did get the man over to a safe area and uh, tried to, to treat him. And then when he couldn't do it anymore because his wounds were so bad. Um, and one of the other uh, uh, soldiers came along and helped, and he directed them and told them, you know, what to do to save these, this man's life. He said, "Don't bother with me. Um, I just listen to what I'm saying and do this for this wounded man." So that was his great valor. I have to say, I got choked up, even knowing mm -hmm. the story. I got mm -hmm. choked up in rereading it in preparation yes. for this, because the fact that he. He, I, he obviously ended up being wounded much worse than the person yes. whose life he was saving, mm -hmm. but he went past the front line mm -hmm. and was dragging him back and was in worse shape himself, mm -hmm. but continued on, mm -hmm. brought him to safety, mm -hmm. and then told the um, people there to help, the other mm -hmm. corpsmen, right. Right. to right. not worry about him, to treat mm -hmm. the person he had just dragged there to safety, as well as two other people who were wounded, yes. and mm -hmm. that he just... Right. kept his calm right. and directed them and said he knew his wounds were fatal and shortly after finishing giving the directions for helping all the wounded right there died. Right. So mm -hmm. that is just very heartwarming. Right. And that is very why he earned the Congressional Medal of Honor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Given to someone who uh, exhibits extreme courage in combat to do something above and beyond what a person would normally do. Mm -hmm. and, and even more impressive, I guess, is the fact that he was still so young. Mm -hmm. He, There were a couple of different articles that had some information wrong. One mentioned that he was 23, another said he was 21, but he was actually only three weeks past his 19th birthday. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So he was still a teenager. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, all those students mm -hmm. at Leicester School definitely have something mm -hmm. to be proud of. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 battle that you know he was part of was one of the longest battles um, as part of the Pacific, mm -hmm. you know, um, assault, mm -hmm. and uh, it was an 82-day battle, and it began mm -hmm. in April and ended in June, and it um, actually once when Fred the day Fred passed was uh, the battle only lasted maybe five more days, so he was oh. so close to the end of making it mm -hmm. through, you mm -hmm. know, this horrific, you know. Um, back and forth of what was happening, um, you know, but in the end he mm -hmm. saved, you know, multiple other people with his medical expertise yeah. Yeah. and his selflessness, you know, um, in the, you know, during the course of, you know, that time. Did we mention that this was Okinawa, Japan? Yes. I'm not sure. Yes. Did we mention? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, luckily for the, the family and his other two brothers who were also fighting, they did come back safely. Yes. So right. The other true. two brothers mm -hmm. came back. Now right. Floyd even heard about the death after it happened. I guess word travels mm -hmm. fast, so he knew fairly soon after it happened mm -hmm. that Fred had died mm -hmm. and the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Well, we can understand why there were so many honors. Um, mm -hmm. Beginning with the Congressional Medal of right. Honor, did you want to say something yes, about that? Yes, I was going to say that the Congressional Medal of Honor dates back to Civil War times. Uh, it was Abraham Lincoln who decided that medals should be given to those who showed extreme valor. And it is, uh, his medal was actually given to him on Memorial, or his parents on Memorial Day of 1946. And I believe we have here a, mm -hmm. the, um, 
the, oh, the actual, wording? actual wording of mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm. Congressional Medal that he received. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And say it is not given out lightly, it is given only to those who show extreme valor uh, in an extreme situation. So it's something that is to be very proud of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there, that is something from the school. It's hung in the school. This is yes. We do have this in our front lobby um, of our school, and this one is um, also included in our um, our treasure that we have <laughs> at our school. But uh, this, you know, over to um, on this side is the actual um, a copy of the actual mm -hmm. telegram that came because um, it was telegram in mm -hmm. those days right. uh, to you know. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Lester, and, you know, notifying them of their uh, child's death. And then this is a um, letter that was written, you know, to them as well um, from Harry Truman, uh, who mm. was the president of, at the time. And um, so we put, you know, both of those, you know, together so that um, the people, you know, who visit Lester and want some history can take a look and see these artifacts. Is so, that print too small for you to read mm -hmm. right now <laughs> on the right? On the, this one with yeah. the, the... If it's um, too small, don't worry uh, about No, it. I can probably read it. Okay, okay let's, let's so, try that. Um, it was in grateful memory of Fred Faulkner Lester, who died in the service of his country. It, um, he stands in the unbroken line of patriots who have dared to die, that freedom might live and grow and increase its blessings. Freedom lives and through it, he lives in a way that humbles the undertaking of most men. And Very signed nice. Harry Truman. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. So, okay. yes. Does the History Museum have um, replicas of these things? Do you know? I, I, was that there? Yes, these okay, were, that was were from, from our Downers collection. Grove oh, Museum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes. it came mm -hmm. that way. Okay. okay. And in, in addition to, uh, do you want, in uh, addition to the yes, Congressional let's talk Medal, about all of the he honors. did oh, yeah. receive other uh, honors. Mm -hmm. There was a destroyer escort that was built locally in Bay City, Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, we have many boats that were built up there for the war. And that one uh, was built and in 1954 launched and christened the USS Fred Lester. Mm -hmm. So that was there. Okay. Um, we do have a lane called Lester Lane in Downers Grove, is south of the main, of the Downers Grove Township area. Uh, okay. So there is a Lester Lane out well, here. I like the alliteration. But yeah. in, um, <laughs> um, in 1948, there was a man who was... Um, um, starting a subdivision in, in uh, Park Forest, yes. mm -hmm. and he picked three uh, Congressional Medal of Honor winner uh, uh, recipients mm -hmm. to name streets after in his mm -hmm. new subdivision, and Fred mm -hmm. Lester was one of those. Mm -hmm. Plus there was a uh, field in Okinawa named for him, and yes. I believe some sort of medical facility in Okinawa yes. too. Right. So, mm -hmm. there, so Fred's name was used in many different honors uh, mm -hmm. after his passing. Camp yes. Lester and mm -hmm. the Marine Corps base. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, and um, in uh, the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, also named, named yes. the street yes. after him. Right. You know, so yeah. he's got right. some, he's got quite a few right. things, yeah. right. but so, which is and right so because they're not just in Downers Grove either. Right. They're yeah. just right all, all over the, place. the world. Right. 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 Which is good because mm -hmm. he was a hero for this right. country. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, well. What about the meaning of history and how important it is to share information like this with other people and why we need heroes and role models and all, all of that? Well, what do we think about that? I think for the children of Lester School, they are so mm -hmm. lucky to have all of this wonderful history about the person their school is named for. And, and, a, and a contemporary type person. I mean, we mm -hmm. have presidents that we name schools for and poets, but people mm -hmm. who lived a long, long time ago. But here's a, a boy who lived on their block, literally, right. Right. and who lived in a time when they may have great parents who lived at that time, and, and they can mm -hmm. relate to his life being uh, closer to their life and to see what kind of a, you know, a person uh, he was to them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important. And being this is the 50th, I'll give a plug, the 50th mm -hmm. anniversary of the Downers Grove mm -hmm. Historical Society this year, mm -hmm. we are very glad to do anything to promote and preserve history. And I am very happy that Lester School has done so much research to preserve the history of uh, Fred Lester's life. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Do incoming students learn about Fred Lester right off the bat, or is that just included as part of Downers Grove history when they get to, is it second grade or third grade at this point? Second. Third or fourth? Second, second, second grade. Okay. Mm -hmm. When they get the tour of the History yeah. Museum and so on. Yes. Do they automatically learn about him, or do they wait until? It is something that we will point out in our lobby, but when we're giving a tour, but we don't necessarily go into his whole history then. Right, of um, course. You know, and we, some of it is, you know, we do have some of the newspaper articles and things hanging, so um, visitors to our lobby, if they're waiting for anything, they will read, you know, about the history of Fred Lester, or they'll read on our, um, you know, community bulletin board there. You know, we have a bunch of different things for people mm -hmm. to, you know, take advantage of in mm -hmm. terms of getting information. So, um, but yes, I you know we like I said previously, I think the kids, especially around the holidays when it's the, um, you know the veterans and the the Memorial Day where the teachers are you know teaching our little ones about you know the history you know and how important these people were you know um, to us the you know the, anyone who has served in the armed forces at any time be we would not be here today and living in this wonderful free society, you know, and especially when we hear about all these things that are happening around the world, you know, without those people who have mm -hmm. made, you know, the United States what it is. So um, I just, I'm, I am just feel blessed that, you know, my school is named after him because, mm -hmm. you know, I think it um, is a wonderful tribute and, you know, he was, like you had just said, he's, he was part of our community and um, he, what he did was wonderful and so for him to be honored in this way and for our children you know to continue to learn about him mm -hmm. and you know other men and women who you know were part of the armed forces mm -hmm. I just think that's a great thing. It is, so. it is. I find myself wondering about the man, that particular man whose life he saved as well as the other mm -hmm. two that he mm -hmm. got help mm -hmm. for at, in that particular incident and I don't know that we have that information. No, I don't, I don't know that anyone has ever looked I it up. Don't have but right. it would just be interesting mm -hmm. to think, or it is interesting to think, that perhaps that man had half a dozen children and they all mm -hmm. have gone off and done something wonderful mm -hmm. in the world and that he himself mm -hmm. has had mm -hmm. a good productive life mm -hmm. and and their children did something and their children did something. You know, mm -hmm. I mean it's the paying it forward bit. You yes. never know what might happen because of some good action on your part. Mm -hmm. So and I it's think nice his to think parents that. paid forward quite a bit because right. they uh, participated in these honors. And his father also was very active in the Bradley Burns post-80. He was In commander. 1949, right. he was commander. Mm -hmm. right. So, you know, he took an active part in uh, preserving the military uh, recognition of all those who served. Many people mm -hmm. from Downers Grove served in back all the way to the Civil War, World mm -hmm. War I, World War II, Spanish-American, uh, many soldiers, and he recognized how important that was to keep uh, all this history. Right. right. And in fact, all of the servicemen in the town, I, I'm sure, are honored and should be because they're lucky that they lived, but it doesn't mean that they did any less, you know, in saving oh, exactly. lives and so on. Mm -hmm. Right. The Bradley Burns Post does go to the cemeteries on Memorial Day, um, mm -hmm. and I believe maybe Veterans Day, and they do put out uh, flags for all these veterans. Uh, Fred Lester is buried over at the Clarendon Hill Cemetery with his parents, and mm -hmm. there is a memorial there for him, and I am sure that uh, on, the, on Veterans Day, uh, the flags are put out there by his grave, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Yes. He has... Um, you know, he was came from the very patriotic family. Right. His older brother George served in the Army Air Corps in World War II as a gunner and a um, bombardier. Mm -hmm. And then um, his brother Clayton was also in the Navy. He was a chief petty officer. Um, he was actually Clayton was able to visit um, Lester's overseas grave prior mm -hmm. to coming home um, and you know at the end of his tour of duty so um, that was special his brother-in-law was Warren Lebeck um, they lived in resided in Hinsdale he was married to the older sister Dorothy mm -hmm. and he was also in the Navy really? so just so many you know this this patriotism mm -hmm. was just so prevalent in this family mm -hmm. um, and at the time right, you know right. in, in the whole community but um, anyway. Lloyd Meisner was also a Marine but yes. he was in a different right. division right. yes yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, Fred was, his division was the actually the 1st Battalion, 22nd Marine Regiment, 6th Marine Division. Mm -hmm. And so he did work, um, he was with the Marines when he was, but the Navy and the Marines 
you know, kind of tag team each other a little yeah, bit. So Fred said that yeah. they didn't have medics in the uh, Navy, mm -hmm. so they or the Marines, so they relied on the Navy mm -hmm. to bring the the uh, hospital the corpsmen. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. why he was connected with them. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned where he's buried, which is interesting too, because mm -hmm. again, along with some of the misinformation I read, one article said that he was going to be buried in Downers Grove, but he isn't. He's actually buried right. in the Clarendon Hills Cemetery, which I think which is, is in really Darien. in Darien. <laughs> yes, so that's so very, it's very, it's very confusing. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah. at the time, I, I that was mm -hmm. 45. Uh, I do believe Clarendon Hills was incorporated by that time. But uh, it's the Downers Grove. It's all Downers Grove Township. So when they that say he's helps. buried in Downers Grove, right. it it they are using mm -hmm. the township right. air location. Yeah. Right. But uh, and his services were at, actually held at Tune, um, which is which good. is down in right you know, downtown from downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. So yes. Mm -hmm. so there are still a lot. Yeah. Well, it is mm -hmm. very important to have some of these details straightened out, and it's just helpful to be accurate. That's one of the main reasons we have an historical exactly. society and a history mm -hmm. museum, and that we have yeah. schools and wonderful uh -huh. teachers and principals. Uh -huh. And I really appreciate your coming and sharing all of this information on Fred Lester, who was definitely a hero mm -hmm. and someone of whom this town can be proud mm -hmm. and is. Mm -hmm. So thank you both very much for coming and sharing all of this information. Thank sure. you for watching this special edition of Today's Tidings.